Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here today, and this time I'm not super late, just a little late, but they have revealed the Corn roster. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this and see how it holds up against the Kislev roster, as well as just my general thoughts on it. So without further ado, let's begin. So right here at the start, we get the one legendary lord that Korn is starting with, and that is of course Scarbrand, the Exiled. Uh, I am very excited for Scarbrand. Um, there's not a ton of new information here. They're kind of doing that thing again where <laughs> the unique abilities and skills are not specific. They're just kind of, mm, <laughs> they're just kind of like vague idea so I'm not gonna worry too much about that we're just gonna worry about kind of the units themselves then our first generic Lord is the exalted bloodthirster which I honestly think is a fantastic decision probably one of my biggest fears going into Total War Warhammer 3 was that they were going to lock all of the greater demons behind character slots which I really did not want to see that happen you know if someone wants to just spam greater demons I think that's fine and you know if you want to try and run a really elite army like that or have multiples you should absolutely do that so the way that they decide to handle it by giving the exalted bloodthirster the lord slot and then the regular bloodthirster a you know unit slot I think was a really cool way to do that so if you just want your army led by a bloodthirster, but then you want to do a mix, that's totally fine. But if you want to run an army that's pure greater demons, you can do that. And that's fantastic. Because, come on, who doesn't want to run an army of just Scarbrand and 19 other bloodthirsters? Come on. <laughs> come on, it's going to be fun. But uh, he looks absolutely fantastic. I really like the model art for this. The um, I have thrown down with a Exalted Bloodthirster during the little event they did for us. And uh, it's a very intimidating model, and I'm really, really excited to get to play with it. I really like the punch dagger that they have in this design. I don't know if they have those on their in-game designs, but I like it in the artwork. Punch daggers are great. Then the second generic lord is actually a surprise. The Herald of Corn. Um, that, it makes sense, but that's an interesting decision. So for anyone familiar with tabletop or uh with me actually talking about my prior experience with total war warhammer 3 i was really curious why they were not calling the hero version the herald of corn because in tabletop or just the lore or what have you the hero version of the demons of corn is a herald but it looks like in this they have just gone out gone ahead and upgraded them to be in a lord slot to give you two different demons to be leading your uh, hordes of chaos into battle with which you know gives you some nice variety you can either have a big scary bloodthirster or you can have a more grounded herald of corn i will admit i was not expecting this i think it works out fine and this explains why the blood reaper which the blood reaper is usually just the unit champion of a blood letter unit but the blood reaper was upgraded to be a hero choice so we have the Herald of Corn here. Uh, these guys are probably, I think where the um, Exalted Bloodthirster is much more of a powerhouse whose job is to get in there and just mess things up and cleave things apart. I think the Herald of Corn is going to be much more of your support character. You know, much more akin to, you know, not a wizard, but he's going to be much more akin to fulfilling a role of kind of buffing people around him while still having, you know, fairly killy abilities because it is a Demon of Corn. But uh, for mounts, they can take the Juggernaut or the Blood Throne. That's awesome. So the Blood Throne did actually have its own unique video um, by Creative Assembly, which showed off uh, that model in game, and it looked fantastic. Um, and the, the Blood Throne is essentially the Skull Cannon, but it's more designed as a melee... It's more designed as like a melee juggernaut. Uh, maybe juggernaut's a bad term to use. It's 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 a it's a melee platform, kind of like a chariot, that has really good. It, it kind of acts as a buff system that also has regeneration, close combat, stuff like that. But I'm really glad to see that arriving as a mount. And of course, they can have the juggernaut mount. And this this pretty much, in my mind, um, locks in that I'm sure we're probably going to see Uzul, aka Skulltaker, as 
a free LC lord for corn at some point in the future. Because Skull Taker is just a really beefed up Herald of Corn, And they're already a Lord slot, so it should be pretty easy, I imagine, to make him. Um, that's it. That's it for the Lords. So there is no... There are no Beastmen Lords, and there are no Human Lords. There's actually not a single... Interesting. Okay. So then for Heroes, uh, we'll actually talk about the Blood Reaper next. So the Blood Reaper is just the hero level. It's literally just the, the, the hero version of the Herald of Corn. Um, they can take even the exact same mounts. So, you know, like an Empire General to an Empire Captain kind of situation. Um, but Blood Reaper is a good name for it. I'm, I'm Looks great. Sounds great. Awesome. Then this is super interesting. There is no Warrior of Chaos generic characters. We have a new mortal character, but it's a cult. So we have the Cultist of Corn. Uh, let's see. The cults of Corn can be found across the world. Less fond of the clandestine trappings that accompany the dark powers. Blood cults quickly take hold in arenas and fighting pits. Although secret martial lodgings dedicated to lower skulls have been discovered in the higher echelons of society. Um, is the cultists that establish and propagate these sects, roaming far and wide to serve their god, spreading corruption in their stead. Their methods are often insidious as they are direct, uh, found, from founding illicit fighting dens to causing all out riots. Strong cultists are usually hunting out rivals to fight, with the victor claiming the slain's warriors of their own. Some aspire to rise and become true champions of Korm, but there are plenty of eager supplicants who simply wish to murder and slay in the blood god's name, and so spread the cult's influence far and wide. Okay, wow, so this is really interesting. Wow, okay, so the hmm. So the cultist of corn, you know, I, I think a lot of us, myself included, thought that, okay, so the way they're gonna handle the demons is that the, you're gonna have demons of chaos, but like how do you how do you get the demons out of the realm of chaos? And for a lot of us we said, okay, well there be there'll be some kind of cult mechanic. You know, there'll be some way to spread chaos corruption and maybe you can summon demons in uh, to the rest of the world. And now we have it confirmed that the cultist is a hero type explicitly for the mono god factions. So these guys, I imagine, are probably going to function much more as agents that you send ahead of your armies to mess with people and set things up so that you can invade and um, get a lot of good bonuses and stuff going forward. But this is notably different than what I was expecting. And this also explains, uh, I think there's at least one person in my community that pointed this out, but this also explains why in the Trial by Fire trailer they use the generic Chaos Lord um, instead of a unique model. And we've already, we have seen this guy. If you watch the Corn trailer, there's a clip where you can kind of... It's either the Trial by Fire trailer... I think it's the Trial by Fire trailer. Uh, there's a clip where you see this mostly... You see this guy who kind of looks like a marauder. But he's like... He doesn't have a lot of armor. And he's like really all... Uh, corned up. And he's riding a Chaos Steed. And that's who this guy is. And uh, of course, if you look at the screenshot... That included the Minotaurs... Um, <clears throat> we also see him in the hero slot. So... Interesting. That's that's the only mortal character. Uh, let's see what we got for units. For infantry, we've got the Chaos Warriors of Corn. So the Chaos Warriors of Corn are let's see. You have axe and shield, dual axes and halberds. Okay, pretty much what we had figured out so far. And the dual axes are much more of a berserker variant with anti-infantry. It sounds like. So you're, so if you want to go tankiness, you go axe and shield. It sounds like if you want to just go pure raw damage and hopefully really high melee attack, you go dual axes. And then if you want armor piercing or anti-large, you go halberd. Next, we've got the blood letters, which are your standard demon infantry that look absolutely fantastic and wonderful. Super spooky. Gain power as they kill. Okay, so like we talked about uh, during the... Uh, I, I don't think the videos come out yet. As we're going to talk about in a Q&A video uh, from a Q&A CNA did, CA, not C and A, CA did, the, some of the Demons of Corn apparently have a passive or sets of passives that gain in power as they get kills. So the more kills your unit gets, the more powerful they become. 
And it looks like the Blood Letters and the Exalted Blood Letters are going to do that. Which, speaking of which, then we've, of course, got the Exalted Blood Letters. Which uh, is a great way to just create an elite unit. Um, hopefully they'll look notably different than the Blood Letters. Maybe they'll have, like, little bits more of armor or something. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they even just say, just a straight upgrade. So, uh, once you, uh, once you acquire them, they're just flat out better than regular blood letters. Uh, they're stronger, more accurate, and hardier. So, the only downside is they're more expensive. <laughs> uh, let's see, the corn cavalry and chariots. There's a Gorby's chariot. Uh, even though they show it being drawn by a juggernaut, uh, but we've actually seen the Gorbis in the some of the uh, some of the trailers or some of the screenshots. One of the two, uh, a number of people have kind of like spied out Gorbis chariots, but um, it, it kind of looked in the image like the Gorbis was just out there by itself. But it seems that either it's like a weird situation where maybe they had the model. Um, and it like you just can't see the chariot, or maybe it didn't render in correctly or something. But it is a, it is an actual chariot. So, um, but uh, the Gorby's chariot, which is the heaviest version of the traditional Chaos chariot, as you know, super armor, uh, super armored, and all that jazz. You know, you should know these if you played the Warriors of Chaos and Total War Warhammer One. Um, wow, this is the cheapest option of cavalry for the Cornate Horde. Whoa, so he doesn't even get Chaos Chariots. He just goes straight to Gore Beast. Corn ain't got time for that light crap. That also means there's no Marauders. So there's no Marauder Horsemen. Um, okay, then, yeah. Um, wow. Uh, then we have Blood Crushers, which are your next tier. So no Chaos Knights. There are no Chaos Knights either. Uh, you got Powerful Demon Shock Cavalry, lots of physical resistance, um, and it's your Demons on Demons system. Very, very powerful force. Super, and probably, yeah, one of the most terrifying charges in the old world. So probably going to hit, like, absolute trucks. I love Juggernauts. I'm really excited to see those charges. And then the uh, Skull Crushers. Yep, the Skull Crushers of Corn. So Skull Crushers are, like, the most elite of the elite Chaos Knights um, of Corn. But they have to be specifically dedicated to Corn. Uh, Skull Crushers do not exist for any other god. So they're, you know, they're just the big bads uh, for the uh, Cornate. Interesting. Corn Monsters and Beasts. You got your Chaos Warhounds as your super duper cheap, um, fast beasts to just run things down and be good frontliners that just eat damage and stuff. The Chaos Furies, which we've seen quite a bit of. Um, they do have sp spell resistance or more powerful than uh, Furies of the other gods when it comes to pure melee. And then your Flesh Hounds, the Flesh Hounds of Corn, which look fantastic, and I'm really excited to see them in action. Very fast units, probably really high damage. They have the high, I believe they're going to have the highest spell resistance in the game, from what I understand. Which, it does make sense, they all have the Brass Collars, which most demons of Corn do not have. Uh, even among Bloodthirsters, it's not guaranteed they'll have Brass Collars, but... All Flesh Hounds have Brass Collars, and the Brass Collars make them hilariously resistant to magic. You can call them Little Cav. Uh, and then the Spawn of Corn. So you have Chaos Spawn of Corn, so you know, they're unbreakable, good for uh, smashing down doors. And they're unbreakable, so you can just throw them into combat alone and have a good time. And then Minotaurs of Corn. So they're very specifically... They have a name? I think they're called... I think some people in the past have referred to these as Corn Bulls. Uh, let's see... The Cornatars. Hmm, Cornatars. I think... I think Cornbull sounds better, but... Cornatar isn't awful. Um, I mean, it's a gimmicky name, but... <laughs> so are all the, uh... So are, like, uh... Um... Uh, Corngors. Like, Corngore... Cornatar, the, yeah, that's 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 pretty much the same, honestly. Um, it's actually the same name convention. If you're going to say Bestigore goes to Corngore, then I would agree that Minotaur would then go to Cornatar. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, Cornatar, they look great. They look absolutely awesome. Um, there are two variants. So there's dual axes and great weapons. 
So there actually is not a Axe and Shield variant. Or there's no shielded variant like there is in the traditional Beastmen. There's only the Berserker variants. Oh, but they're armored. Ooh. Okay, so they are different than regular Beastmen. Or uh, regular Minotaurs. Okay, so Korn's Minotaurs are actually heavily armored. Um, as opposed to the regular ones. Oh, is that it for the beast? Oh, yeah, that's it for the beastmen. Oh my god, the soul grinder. <laughs> we got we got a 40k model in here. Um, the soul grinder has a really funny history um, that I'll get into another day. But like the, the TLDR is basically that Games Workshop wanted to create the soul grinder, and it, as you can tell just looking at it, it's really intended as a 40k piece. But it, the, one of the things about the Demons of Chaos and Tabletop is that the, um, the, the demons share all of their models between universes. So if you own Demons of Chaos models, you can play them in 40k or fantasy. Uh, all of them. Literally all of them. So um, the Soul Grinder was given rules in fantasy and they crafted together some lore... Uh, to make it work in fantasy, which is basically, and they do talk about it here, which is that if a demon is killed, they get banished back to the Forge of Souls where their uh, physical bodies are remade, but if for whatever reason they are just possessed about wanting to get out immediately, maybe because they want to get revenge on the one who killed them, or they don't want to go through the process of being uh, reforged, or they want to avoid some particular issue, they can make a bargain um, with an entity at the Forge of Souls that will turn them into this, which is a soul grinder. And it is a, it is a, it is not a good deal to make a lot of the time. But they're very, very cool designs. So this is the corn one, uh, the cornate soul grinder. And uh, they look fantastic. They're really big. Like they are big, 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 big monsters. And, uh, oh, okay, so this is going to be one of the ranged weapon, and uh, ma ranged melee hybrid models. So it's got powerful weaponry while on the move and is very dangerous in close combat. So it's kind of got like a cannon arm. And then uh, very high resistance to physical and spell damage. Tremendously difficult to kill. I also imagine it's decently armored considering most of its body is, you know, a metal colossus. Woof. I, I'm gonna wow I really did not think they were gonna put the soul grinders in at launch I really didn't I thought that was gonna be DLC and then of course the generic blood thirster which is kick-ass and uh, can tear people apart it's got fire and magical attacks so it's gonna be good against a lot of things um, it's always nice to have some fire attacks available and then we got the skull cannon which we've seen um, extends oh is that a war shrine Oh, the Blood Shrine of Corn. Except for it's on a motorcycle. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrifying. Yo, we got another Blood... Oh, cool, they're bringing in War Shrines. I, I really hope the generic Warriors of Chaos get a War Shrine. Because if they're going to give all the Dark Gods War Shrines right at the start, that means Norska and then all four of the Dark Gods have their War Shrine models, but Warriors don't. <laughs> uh, the Blood Shrine, I... Um, the, the Blood Shrine is just the corn version of the Chaos War Shrine. And it, it, they're just buff wagons. They're just big buff wagons. So uh, here you got, it's just a big old chariot. I'm sure it's going to have some blood letters or maybe some cultists on it. Uh, heals while in close combat. Boosts morale for nearby enemies. Or ne sorry, nearby allies. It'd be a little silly if it was enemies. And I'm sure it'll have some other functionality as well. Uh, wow, they really got the mileage out of the <laughs> out of the uh, skull cannon piece, didn't they? So this is the this is the blood throne variant. The blood throne variant um, you cannot take as a generic model. The blood throne is a mount for the blood reaper and the herald of corn. The skull cannon is the ranged variant, and then this big old honker over here on the right is the uh, war shrine variant. Which uh, that I mean that actually works totally fine. Uh, the, the typical War Shrine model on tabletop is carried by these two, like, giant, deformed, chaos spawn-looking things. But you could upgrade a Mammoth to have one. Uh, I think it was in the Storm of Chaos, or maybe in, like, just the regular Mammoth rules from an older edition. I don't remember what edition it was. But Norska also has a War Shrine model, but theirs is, of course, a um, Mammoth option. 
Uh, and that's it. Okay, so, wow, there is a lot going on here that's really interesting. So, there are three big things I want to talk about. Um, and I think, I think the easiest one to talk about is that the entire demon catalog is in the game. There are zero missing demons from the 8th edition Demons of Chaos army book for Warhammer Fantasy. Um, they've actually even added some demons with the war shrine which is uh that's it's it's functionally just a new design um the cultist though that's a new character the exalted blood letters that's totally new those didn't exist um so like they didn't create any new models but they did bolster the range a bit uh by kind of taking designs they already had and you know finding another way to use them um so i i don't I don't know. I don't know how you could do a DLC for this faction. I, I don't know how you could do paid content for corn. Um, in a traditional Lord pack, like I don't think you can do a Lord pack about them. You could do a character pack. So you know, obviously they they they've got the standard amount of characters for a base release, which is two lords, two heroes. Um, sometimes you know it varies. Sometimes factions only have one lord. And maybe like three heroes, or maybe they have two lords and four heroes, or two lords and two heroes, or whatever. But I think two and two is fine for Korn, especially because he doesn't have wizards. Um, but, um, yeah, I... So, I will say I am extremely impressed that the entire demon roster is in. Because I assume that's going to be the case for every god. The only god I could see not having all of his demons is Nurgle. But that's because Nurgle got an entire additional book with the Throne of Chaos. Because the Throne of Chaos was attempted was supposed to be a four-part series by Forge World that focused on each of the Dark Gods and introduced like a ton of new demons and characters and stuff for them. Um, but they released part one, which was Tarmacon, and it brought in Tarmacon and uh, created a couple new demons and stuff. But um, unfortunately, the series was cancelled due to the end times um right after that so the other gods never got there so i could see nurgle maybe missing some units but corn's done i mean besides special characters and i guess if they wanted to they could add some more beastmen and some more warriors of chaos but i i don't think you could charge for that like unless we get in there and like the they're like but they use, like, a lot of the same assets. They're basically reskins. I mean, the Minotaurs, uh, the, the Cornotars are at least a little different than regular Minotaurs because they're actually heavily armored. But the, um, the, the Warriors of Chaos are literally just the regular Warriors of Chaos with a reskin, which I have no issue with. I think that's totally fine. You know, they look great. It's what people wanted. But, um, yeah, super interesting. Um, hmm. So... A big, a big point in favor of Creative Assembly is that all the demons are in. I think that's awesome. I think they could have easily gotten away with not doing that. Especially like the Soul Grinder. I could have easily seen saving that for later. But no, they have all the demons in. So I don't, I, I, I guess I'll make a separate video talking about that. And like hopefully, I really hope this means they're going to be doing new kinds of DLC. As much as I like Lord Packs, I'm kind of over them. I just... Lord Packs tend to miss more than they hit, in my opinion. And I, I would much rather they do something else. Um, you know, I, I could see a couple of factions still could use Lord traditional Lord Packs. Uh, because Lord Packs can be good for factions that just aren't fully fleshed out yet. Like Dwarves... I think Dwarves, Norska, Vampire Counts, and Warriors of Chaos... I think all of them still need, like, at least two Lord Packs each <laughs> kind of levels. But for a lot of factions now, uh, Korn joining them, they have all their units. So, you know, you can't... I mean, I guess you could make a Lord Pack for them, but you wouldn't really be adding great stuff at that point, I think. But um, another... So the other two things I want to talk about is... 
this faction is different than I thought it would be. I, based on the advertisements, not that they weren't misleading us. Like, everything they showed us is in the game. But based on what I had seen so far, I thought that the four god factions were were legions of chaos. And when I say legions of chaos, I mean that they were just like units, just the the warrior of chaos roster, the demon roster, and the beastman roster combined. That's not what they're doing. What they're doing is it is the demons of chaos split into the four gods and then the demons roster is supplemented with a handful of units from both rosters. I mean, from the beastmen, you, you have two units. Argu well, ar you have really one unit, but arguably three. Which is you have the Minotaurs, or the Cornotars, that's one. And then you could argue that war uh, Chaos Warhounds and Chaos Spawn. Even though, I, you know, whether you consider those Beastmen or Warriors of Chaos is up to you. But, so, that's only three units from the Beastmen roster. But o really only one. And then if you count, the, but if you count them for the Warriors roster, you have one, two, with those two, then the Gorby's Chariot for three, and then Warriors of Chaos for four, with three variants. That's it. That is literally it. So there's no Chaos Knights, there's no Chosen, there's no, there's no Marauders whatsoever. Um, there's no Marauder Horsemen, there's no Marauder Units, uh, there's no, there's no Exalted Heroes, there's no Chaos Lords, there's no Wargors or Doom Bulls or, uh, you know, Beast Lords or any of that. This, it is Demons of Chaos plus Friends, which I don't think is a bad thing. I actually think it's a good thing. Um, I, I think I'm going to make it, uh, that its own video. I'm going to make a, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make a video about that. Because I, I don't want to get super off topic into a ton of stuff. Um, and then the third thing that I really noticed about this roster is... Uh, ooh, maybe I was going to say... Hmm, I lost my train of thought on that, but that's okay. Um, overall, as far as being a corn faction that looks like corn, it feels like corn, it has all the demons, it has a really kick-ass starter starting legendary lord... Everything looks really good. Everything that they've added makes total sense. Anything that they took from other rosters has been appropriately transformed to match Korn's aesthetic and playstyle. Where there's like, there's no, there's very, very few um, shielded stuff. Virtually everything is like berserker themed. Um, or just, you know, kill, 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 kill kind of stuff. Um, honestly, I think the roster is fantastic. I think it's excellent. I think it's better than the Kislev roster. Um, for sure. Um, honestly, I think I gave Kislev like a 8 yesterday. Or a 7.5. Honestly, after think sleeping on it, I'd probably say a 7.5. Corn, um, I'm going to give Corn a 10. I'm going to give Corn a 10 out of 10. I think this is a really strong starting roster for Corn. Uh, granted, not like, not to... Uh, to, to be fair to Kislev, everything in the Kislev roster is new, whereas in the Corn roster, it is being bolstered by a number of units taken from other rosters, but not that many. I mean, only, what, five of the units in here are from other rosters? Minotaurs, Spawn, Warhounds, Chariot, uh, Warriors. Yeah, so five units. Um, I think this is great. This is This is honestly what I wanted. Um, I, so what I'm expecting now, uh, is for the other gods to be the same. One Beastman unit that's been transformed to fit the theme. I'm hoping it's not all just Minotaurs, you know? I hope it's maybe, okay, Korn gets Minotaurs, because if, if any of the Dark Gods was going to have a Beastman, Korn would have Minotaurs. They go hardcore hand in hand. But, um, uh, if you have Cornitars, you know, I hope that, you know... Each of the Dark Gods just has something different. So maybe, um, you know, you get Zongors with Zinch, which are, you know, hardcore ranged um, fighters, or maybe they're spellcasters or something, and they have, like, a unique appearance. And then 
you get uh, instead of having uh, your best gores as Zongors and your Minotaurs as um, Cornitars, maybe then for Slanesh you get a different kind of unit and for Nurgle you get a different kind of unit. I, I'd be totally fine with that. Um, and oh, now I remember the third thing. The third thing. And the reason that I give this a 10, I know there's I know there's going to be people out there that go, oh, why didn't they add everything? Why didn't they add everything? Um, here's why. One of the biggest questions that I've had, and many people have asked me, going into this game is, Sotek, if the Monogod factions are going to be combined, so if they have mortals, demons, and beastmen, why would I still play the regular ones? And you now you have your answer. Because it's not everything. It's, it's, it's thematic stuff around that god, but if you really like the Warriors of Chaos, you like having lots of dudes and tanky armor and running around a Marauder Chaff and having lots of the big undivided monsters, then you don't want to play Corn. You want to play Warriors of Chaos. However, what I'm wondering now is how the characters are going to work. Like, if, if Slanesh is mostly demons with a handful of mortal units and a beastman unit, then Sigvald honestly should not move. He should stay with the Warriors of Chaos, but just get his own unique skins and stuff to make him look more Slaneshi. Um, and, you know, give like his army a mark of Slaanesh standard rule. But he should be a Warriors of Chaos character, not a Slaanesh character. Because... It seems like the demons are in charge of these factions, not any of the mortals. Which I don't think is a bad thing. I do not think that's a bad thing. Um, hmm, I'm going to have to think on this. I'm going to have to really think on this, and uh, I've got some videos to make. But that's going to be it for me right now, my guys. I, I could keep talking easily for like another hour about this. But I, I think I want to make separate videos. Um, so in the future, we're, I think we're going to be making videos to talk about what this means for DLC going forward. Um, what this means for, you know, let's let's talk about um, should the Mono God factions have more units from the Warriors of Chaos and Beastmen? Or should they all stay separate so that they keep their own identities? That's going to be a really interesting question to tackle, I think. And uh, I hope you all will join me for when it's time for that. So uh, that's going to be it for me for now. Um, thank you all for watching. And uh, let me know down in the description what you thought. What's your rating? You know, 1 being the worst, 10 being the highest. I'm giving this a 10. I think this was a brilliant decision. Because this really will help. Like, there will still be a lot of good theming between the Warriors of Chaos, Beastmen, and Mono God, but I like that the Mono Gods are not just taking over Chaos entirely. Like, they obviously they're like, oh, this is all corn stuff, but if you want to play classic Warriors, well, then you're going to be playing Warriors, not corn. Um, these honestly to me feel like demon factions. They, they feel much more like, hey, these are the demons of Chaos, but we gave them some extra stuff to allow them to be a little split up and then hopefully Bellacor will come in at the end and unify or be a unified demon faction but uh man really interesting so uh yeah let me know what y'all think i would love to know what your score for it is and let me know your thoughts on it so thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye guys